it's always nice to get connected with uh, people who trust the truth of knowledge the best of knowledge and the vision of the academy of orthopedic manual physical therapists aympt that establishing excellence as an evidence of existence okay as long as we are alive we should make everyone the best uh, if we have to become the greatest okay so in that line and in that angle uh, i just thought that uh, we should launch a daily free webinar on twitter uh, the main objective is to reach the global uh, audience twitter is much more global directly we can connect with everyone so it's always uh, a welcome initiative to spread knowledge uh, definitely i was expecting facebook to be the same but most of the experts those who are at elite level uh, they are not much on facebook okay so but they are on twitter okay and uh, in fact the associations the academies all around the globe everyone is there on twitter so aympt has uh, already conducted the three twitter webinars we had the first webinar on evidence based practice in manual therapy which was a general introductory webinar the second webinar was on the a specific one okay we are going into the uh, condition wise so we have taught about one is the evaluation of low back pain and uh, before which also we had on one webinar on the muscle energy techniques okay so one was a technique centered discussion the other one was a uh, um clinical or a patient centered discussion the evaluation of the low back pain to continue with the low back pain series and also yesterday there was an international spine uh, e conference where i had given a lecture coming live so i thought that uh, during that lecture because of the internet connectivity i was not able to be on the screen uh, my audio was clear only when i muted the video so i could not show many things which uh, actually could have been much more depictive uh, and i know that people who listen to me especially during uh, the 300 plus webinars which we conducted during the lockdown all of them know that they look at me they understand better okay it's not the powerpoint it is the power behind the points that is uh, shared okay directly on face to face so even if it is online okay so that experience definitely will make them to learn the best and uh, because of that reason i had taken on the topic you have to empowering patients with chronic low back pain uh, through pain neuroscience education but today i am taking the twitter webinar now it's going to start in another 4 minutes in indian time so just 4 minutes and you follow me on the twitter handle at academy manual and uh, remember that you are going to uh, interact with me with your queries and clarifications related to central sensitization pain neuroscience education and chronic low back pain okay so relating all the three as a pyramid so low back pain is the main focus and we have the one of the mechanism the central sensitization and then the intervention that is the pain neuroscience education so yo, welcome to twitter now and uh, get your uh, gears ready because it's going to be 100 webinars okay till march 31st of 2021 uh, it's part of the aympt's uh, best wish for the happy new year 2021 okay as we unlock or we fight the corona and we stay connected for the glory of knowledge so good luck to you all join me there on twitter of academy of orthopedic manual physical therapists aympt um we had uh, the three twitter webinars in series we have been conducting and we are going to conduct another 97 webinars more before 31st march of 2021 as we launch the mission of aompt for happy new year 2021 okay we don't wish by words and uh, we wish by actions okay the actions to establish excellence as an evidence of existence and to promote the truth and the glory of knowledge among professional development especially from the developing country physios and also the students exclusively free of cost webinars all webinars come with e certificates of participation provided you register by whatsapp directly with me 
and you complete the task and then you get the certificate okay so remember that uh, do not miss these webinars these are mainly the debatable topics uh, which are untouched in routine clinical practice the first webinar was on the muscle energy techniques, the second webinar was, was on the evaluation of low back pain and another webinar on the evidence-based practice in manual therapy. Okay, We had an evidence-based practice symposium uh, yesterday and it was a great event uh, which was headed by Professor Jean Michel Brismi and we paid tribute to the scientific work and the legendary effort of Professor Amit Nagrale okay? who left us a uh, few days before. Uh, he had his birthday on 26th November, so we celebrated or we paid the tribute uh, to our beloved friend from India uh, who really uh, ensured that the best of science uh, should know the name of India okay, in the global map in manual therapy. So it's a great effort that uh, deserves to be acknowledged and AYMPT never uh, leaves any stone unturned okay, when it comes to respecting people who have done a great work okay so it's always uh, a great thing yesterday that we had good participation and uh, every participant enjoyed the session uh, they were enlightened in a positive manner uh, missing a person uh, it's very usual uh, but we should think that how well we can imbibe the values of that person so that uh, we continue on with what the person wanted okay if they were alive how much they would have been doing and how much they wanted to change us. So that we have to imbibe. That is the actual tribute that anyone can pay rather than texting RIP on WhatsApp or Facebook. Okay. So, uh, hi Professor Santil P. Kumar, welcome you all to now, just in a moment. Okay, I'm shifting to the Twitter and we're going to have the live webinar. Come and join me and uh, don't miss the Twitter sessions. Register with me on WhatsApp directly, get the e-certificate. If you don't want certificate, still you follow the AYMPT's Twitter handle so that you can uh, get watch the videos at your leisure. 100 topics, so it's not an ordinary thing. Okay, So, good luck to you all. Enjoy the Sunday, the evening. Audience to join in. Really glad that uh, this topic, yesterday I gave it as a keynote lecture in the International Spine E-Conference organized by Medirise Education International with My Rehab Academy and also our uh, beloved Federation of Indian Manual Therapists, FIMT from Bangalore. So we had a massive conference. Today also it's going on the day two of the conference. And uh, in that conference, I had given the lecture on the, what is called as the ways to empower patients with chronic low back pain and uh, by what is called as pain neuroscience education, uh, mainly how we explain the pain to patients with unexplained pain. Okay, so that's the catchy word: explaining pain to patients with unexplained pain. Okay, so coming to the background information, I'll give, provide you information. So this uh, this is the fourth webinar, the AYMPT Twitter webinar, and I, Professor Santil Pikuma, the chief instructor and the founder of the AYMPT. Uh, from India, I'm going to give you my inputs and I welcome your queries uh, as I am going ahead with my uh, information, okay, so that we have an interactive session as and when I find the queries to be matching with what I am describing uh, so that we go, go ahead with this useful one hour of this Sunday evening um, in India, okay, so welcome you all from around the globe who will be watching this video later on Twitter. So please put your comments by retweeting this video. Definitely I welcome uh, good intellectual discussion uh, because what we learn is always we learn from each other. Okay. And we learn from the experience what we actually have during the interaction. Okay. The experience is the one which teaches. Okay. It's not the person who is teaching the person. Okay. And I always believe knowledge is something which is open and knowledge is always uh, a glory. Okay, that is the most important thing to fight the ignorance and uh, fight all the challenges of profession because uh, more the knowledge, more solid you are, more you are strong in your fundamentals of knowledge. Definitely more ethical you will be, okay, more you will maintain professionalism and uh, you don't need a external professional regulatory body, okay, it's because the self-regulation is more important. 
So coming to chronic low back pain, I would rather understand the chronic low back pain as uh, although there are a bunch of four words where it tells that chronic we are usually usually using it for the duration okay chronology longer duration mostly beyond three months uh, any symptom persist in the spine it's called as the chronic in periphery it is called uh, after three weeks okay we tell it as chronic okay low back pain okay so that's the region between the rib cage and the pelvis okay the lumbar spine uh, the lumbar region where there is a pain which is a symptom so low back pain is a symptomatological term don't think that it's a diagnostic term okay uh, you can put that as low back pain syndrome then it becomes a diagnostic term uh, why syndrome because could be the cause could be anything but the presentation is low back pain okay so when you talk about non specific low back pain versus specific low back pain Specific is actually a particular syndrome. For example, uh, lumbar spondylosis is a specific condition. Lumbar spondylolisthesis, okay, lumbar radiculopathy, and you have lumbar canal stenosis, okay, lumbar myofascial pain syndromes, lumbarization, sacralization. Uh, you have um, strains and sprains of the lumbar ligaments, okay. Uh, lumbar degenerative disc disease, lumbar facet joint syndromes. Okay, so various conditions are there. Lumbar instability is also there, clinical or mechanical instabilities. So all these named conditions are specific low back pain. Okay, non-specific is either combination of this so that multiple conditions are coexisting, or uh, a picture which does not fit into all of this. Okay, so either of which we are going to call it as a non-specific low back pain. I don't go by the term idiopathic, okay. Uh, although it tells that the etiology is not known, okay. You can't uh, define a term idiopathic as a clinician. If you're telling and accepting a term that is idiopathic, it's impossible. You should try to get the at least the mechanism of the low back pain, okay. So here, chronic low back pain, the term is actually equated not with the duration, it is more with the mechanism, okay. Mechanism of repeated pain stimuli from the low back okay and uh, the pain experience uh, for the patient over a period of time has created a, a pain memory okay and also the lumbar spine representation in the somatosensory cortex is replaced with pain okay so it's a cortical representation of the pain over a period of time okay uh, in the chronic low back pain as by duration the traditional term it has two types one is the persistent low back pain where i had pain three years before and i have the pain all three years i have pain okay so that is persistent low back pain recurrent low back pain is i had pain it went off again it came back again it went off again it came back again it went off okay so that is recurrent low back pain okay remember that when we have any kind of an experience if someone is pinching us okay if someone is pinching uh, the skin here okay so if the pinching force is same and if you are continuing to pinch there are two types of responses that can come one is you got adapted to the stimuli and you don't feel that it is a pinching is a pain at all okay so that is the adaptation okay other one is as the pinching force continues some of us who are of other type of personality i would say because there is type a and there is type b okay the type b they'll feel that the pain is increasing with that same sustaining the pinch force okay so some of us feel that the pain is getting less when we are exposed to the stimuli the same stimuli for a longer time uh, some are because we learn it's motor learning okay so we get exposed to the stimuli so we get familiar and uh, we know that it will go okay so that is a thing type a personalities especially athletes okay they have this attitude of uh, adapting okay motor learning they accept it for uh, their well-being and they actually are able to handle the problem much better okay in the initial stage at least but when you talk about type b personality who is a sedentary uh, deconditioned individual just working in particular positions every day and uh, they have their same lifestyle every day okay mm. These are people who are vulnerable. They are already stressed out. Okay, if their psychological stress is there as part of work or as part of family, um, what happens here is um, 
the person will be sensitive to any kind of stimuli okay so those situations what will happen is if there is a stimuli that is being maintained the threshold will be reducing 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 and the patient cannot tolerate the stimuli and they become what is called as hypersensitive to that stimulus and they become after that hyper vigilant okay so i don't want the stimuli okay so something like that so both are types are the type a type b okay if you say in a simple term people who are dominant personalities versus the non dominant personalities okay those who have leadership qualities versus those who don't have leadership qualities okay so those who actually look out for solutions by themselves the problem solving abilities those who actually depend on others for telling them each and everything okay so that is the type b okay so both of them have different responses but uh, in patient who complain of the low back pain we know that uh, it is not just the duration okay it is mainly to do with the mechanism so how to identify that a patient has a central component to the pain okay so that means there are two options by which the central component can come i always equate this uh, central nervous system to the battery okay because the battery provides the impulse okay and then it goes into the circuits the peripheral nerves and then it goes to the bulb okay if it is going to be uh, muscles okay or the ligaments or joints everything okay although the afferent stimulus uh, there is a switch okay so that switch actually is the uh, threshold okay that switch is on we start feeling that it is pain okay when the switch is off we may not feel the pain okay so example of such a scenario uh, we might be standing for long hours okay as we are watching a concert uh, by a celebrity okay or a dance uh, function or something is happening you are standing for 6 hours you may not get back pain but if the same if you are standing to listen to a lecture for example if it is not by aympt definitely it will be more boring and and you will find that in uh, one hour you will get that low back pain okay so and in that lecture we are likely to tell my friend okay i will i am likely to tell my friend that oh back is paining when he is going to finish okay but in the dance concert even if i have a pain i will not tell the friend okay and i'll be more happier to be moving around dancing and i am still enjoying that okay so during that activity i don't feel the pain or i don't report the pain but the moment i stop the activity okay like for example homemakers the housewives uh women who used to cook earlier they used to do the household work earlier okay um so what they do is they have pain okay but when they are doing the activity they are totally they are forgetting the pain okay and that is actually the descending inhibition okay so that means the cortex produces the endogenous opioid opioids we all know that two terms the endorphins and the encephalins okay so they can come for any kind of a perceived control okay i have to control this pain if i decide that immediately the endogenous opioids will come okay and they will diminish the pain if not make the pain to disappear at least it will reduce the perception or the intensity of the pain to a large extent okay mm, so it's something which is a very dramatic phenomenon of uh, the creation that human beings can actually manage their pain by their mind itself okay so that's why there are techniques of meditation there are techniques of uh, mind body medicines okay there are alternative therapies so many that are available that uh, spiritual healing uh, reiki uh, you name any interventions okay so they always uh, have an impact that it's through the brain they can address the symptoms okay not only pain any symptoms of the body okay so that's something which is there in the ancient tradition of india also okay so what we are trying to get now through the sciences to explore the mechanism that is the where the brain is also mediating this pain okay so remember the battery okay so if the circuit is there okay if the switch is there or not there sometimes without switch the connection can be there and the bulb can glow okay and uh, bulb is not there then there cannot be but the different types of bulbs nerve is a different type of bulb um, muscle is a different type of bulb uh, joint is a different type of bulb okay ligament capsule everything every structure is different type of bulb because the wattage of every bulb is different same like that the innervation the free nerve endings amount how much is present in every structure is different 
For example, in low back pain, if you talk about specifically nucleus pulposus has very less free nerve endings. Okay. When we talk about annulus fibrosis of the intervertebral disc, anterior annulus is less innervated compared to the posterior annulus. Okay. Posterior annulus in addition to the free nerve endings is innervated by the sinovertebral nerves. So they have extra segmental innervations together with the anterior part of the dura matter. Okay. In dura also, anterior dura is highly innervated compared to the posterior dura. Okay. We have the dorsal root ganglia that is coming in the nerve root. So that is anyway, it is a highly, it's a, it's a center of ectopic discharge. Okay. So it can produce uh, stimuli irrespective of uh, any kind of an afferent or the afferent stimuli requirements. So that is a wide dynamic range uh, neurons are present there. Okay. So different types of properties are present, different structures are present. Uh, neurophysiologically, the pain can be generated, okay, what is by the mediated by the central nervous system, okay, and this is uh, clinically, most of us, we recognize the fact that if people who have low back pain for six years, 10 years down the line, they always have what is called as, uh, you know, the cognitive issues, that is, they cannot understand things properly, okay, they have emotional issues, okay, they may be too much over expressive or they may be depressed, okay. So there's always components of the psychosocial uh, factors that are coexisting. I would uh, make you to understand one thing. If the battery, in the battery, if the uh, ions, okay, the fluid that is there, the electrolyte, and also the distilled water, the proportion, okay, all this, if that is altered, okay, it is something which is to do with the neurotransmission in the brain, that is central sensitization, okay. But if the battery is normal, but you reverse the pole, instead of positive and negative, you are keeping the battery negative and positive, the bulb will not glow, okay? So what happens here is, the polarity is reversed, that is the non-organic pain, that is the psychosocial, okay, cognitive affective mechanism. So you should try to differentiate between central sensitization and cognitive affective, okay? Cognitive affective is a top to down, that means we create the pain in the brain and then we want to feel the pain, okay? and we get uh, emotionally attached with the pain and then we generate a behavior to mimic or to malinger that I'm having back pain. Okay, so that is a non-organic low back pain. Uh, Gordon Waddell described the non-organic signs and then James reacts uh, over the uh, years. He also advised that we should use that. So in clinical practice, the psychogenic pain can be easily identified and differentiated by clinicians using various questionnaires like fear avoidance belief questionnaire. Okay, it has a work subscale, it has a physical activity subscale. So you can always uh, explore the risk factors of yellow flags like uh, compensations, okay, from the company employer, work-related benefits or mediclaim insurance-related benefits, okay, which might uh, um, uh, benefit the people if they're having low back pain. So the patients might actually project that they're having back pain, okay. This situation, the patient will be exaggerating the emotions, okay, expressions, okay. They may not be exaggerating uh, when they are in the waiting hall, especially in a clinic, okay, so they are in the waiting room. Uh, there they'll be sitting like just like this, okay, sad, okay. So when they come in front of the therapist, okay, the physical therapist, they know that this is the therapist who's going to certify me for my disability or going to give the signature for my compensation, okay? Seeing the therapist, immediately they will do, ah, 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 okay? So much of facial expressions, exaggerated expressions they're likely to do because they are attention-seeking behavior, okay? So they want that uh, sympathy from you and uh, they're actually acting or mimicking. It's an illness behavior, okay? And they're likely to say that, uh, please, doctor, please give me massage, okay? I don't, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't want to live, okay, so much I am suffering, oh, they, they might start emotionally exploding, they might cry, and uh, they will not allow you to take the history, okay, they will be happy to show you their file, okay, um, but uh, still they will not allow you more time, okay, if you're reading the file and if you're asking some questions, they will not answer you, uh, they will be pleading you for help, start with the treatment, something you do, please, please. And uh, emotionally, they'll be getting dependent on you, okay? And uh, they want a massage treatment, a passive treatment, exercises you cannot prescribe. 
they will always tell my pain is worsening with exercises and they will always come back as non-compliant patients okay and they keep doing therapist shopping okay switching from one person to another person so they keep visiting and they never get satisfied with the treatment you find that the tissues were hard when you begin with after the myofascial release or the heat therapy you find that it has become soft you ask the patient that whether pain uh, how is the pain they'll say that uh, press okay after that they'll be like uh, you know after that they'll be like oh no pain is same only okay so they will not tell that they have got better okay if they have got better also they'll say slightly better uh, i have to see how it is okay tomorrow let's see one day only i took treatment na let's see because they don't want to show that they are improving okay until they get the compensation okay and most importantly when they are pretending there are techniques to divert their attention okay so you can actually what you can do is make them to lie down and uh, show them uh, uh, treatment or something or a video which is going on okay so when they are watching that somewhere if you palpate the low back okay there will not be any pain at all okay or you say that you are wearing a nice blazer nice shirt okay and then you touch the back it will not be paining okay but if you are regularly telling that i'm going to check you whether you are having any pain, abnormal temperature and you touch they'll say that it's paining paining because they don't want you to assess they like you to talk they like you to compliment them appreciate them but they will not allow you to assess okay so you know that the diversion uh, when you divert the person if the physical signs they are allowing you to palpate you know and there is no pain or something like that definitely you know that it is predominantly psychogenic which is top to down uh, which is cognitive affective mechanisms okay so the next mechanism of course is the topic of today that is the central sensitization remember in central sensitization the difference is when you divert the patient okay or even when they are sleeping okay when you touch it will pain okay so it's any kind of a peripheral stimulus from that region it's going to be perceived only as pain okay and it's not about the painful stimuli alone which is exaggerated and perceived that is called as the hyperalgesia non painful stimulus even a blowing of air okay on the back okay if there was a fan and then there is air the person will tell that it's a burning pain okay that's allodynia so this is usually there in all of us we might have after an acute trauma we had a fall and we have a swelling and uh, we have severe pain inflammation local inflammatory substances have accumulated more than what is optimum and they are stimulating the free nerve endings we will have hyperalgesia and allodynia in that region but we will not have in the regions which are far away from that okay what is called as widespread hyperalgesia and allodynia so that means that it is a central nervous system that is mediating the pain okay so not only this you will also try to get the previous episodes of pain experience they might have had similar region similar pain or they might have had with low knee pain or it could have been neck pain okay so it could be just the pain okay the pain experience itself which has created them to feel that it is uh, hyper vigilance towards the pain okay so this is a complex phenomena to listen to it but it is easy to identify easy to treat when i when i mention about the treatment techniques you will find it so easier because we all know this homemakers which i was telling athletes whom i was talking the person who is attending the dance concert okay all of them have central sensitization they can control their pain because of their uh, power of the mind okay so that is the descending inhibition so all of us would have experienced this people do rituals uh, as an offering uh, for god uh, they might walk on the fire okay or they might poke themselves with sharp objects but they don't feel the pain okay they don't use any local anesthetics okay so they they don't have pain at all okay so imagine that uh, that kind of a stimulus itself the body can take it okay if the will power is there okay the next thing in central sensitization you are identifying also by uh, two point discrimination sensation okay globally you know affected okay impaired two point discrimination remember it's a cortical sensation so definitely it is associated to do with the cortical mechanism or cortical representation of the pain 
okay so recent studies have explored this also and uh, the scans the advanced scans like positron emission tom emission tomography pet scans or the single photon emission computer tomography spect scans have shown the uh, brain activity being abnormally too much in multiple regions not just in the low back region in patient with a chronic low back pain okay not only that the activity was more this activity was with some specific interventions okay so that also they have documented the treatment effect also and we have very high level of evidence unidirectionally telling that uh, interventions addressing the brain have substantially reduces the symptom and also enabled the functional recovery in not only chronic low back pain the other conditions like fibromyalgia syndrome chronic fatigue syndromes whiplash associated disorders okay even rheumatoid arthritis is a type of a chronic pain comes there okay so remember don't miss that okay this kind of a presentation identify that there is an ob objective structured questionnaire called as the central sensitization inventory csi okay so you can ask these questions uh, by giving the questionnaire to the subject subject can fill that and you can get the score by the score you can categorize the patients into mild moderate severe sens central sensitization okay interventions can also be planned depending upon the categorization of the csi okay so you have got the central sensitization you have known that the patient is having central sensitization now okay how what is the proof okay how do you say that brain you know brain is the actual uh, uh, region where we have to focus for the pain remember um, when we don't have the little finger when it is amputated okay after that also we feel burning pain from the little finger okay so that is the phantom limb pain okay so we are aware of this for years and years more than uh, seven decades we know phantom limb pain so it's not a new term we know that even if the part is not there we have the pain so don't search for the cause of the pain in the part okay that's the first message the second message is of course to do with the not everybody will have phantom limb pain so okay those who have a previous exposure with the pain so they get more and more uh, sensitized to the perception of the pain and their response to the pain is mediated by the pain neuroplasticity okay that happens uh, under the neuromatrix theory okay the, in the brain uh, we have a neuro tag the typical way of responding to every stimuli is determined by the multiple networks in the brain so every one of us has an individual method of responding to it and uh, even a mechanical response when i bend forward i get a back pain this mechanical response is also represented in the brain okay so that's why these central sensitization people uh the other examples like yawning for example okay right from childhood we are yawning we know that yawning is something to do with sleep okay and uh, our brain is sensitized to that okay and we see someone else yawning within seconds we will also yawn why because central sensitization okay visual stimulus is provoking that if you close your eyes you are not seeing the person who is yawning you will not get the yawning okay uh, you might even sleep actually okay so the point here is central sensitization okay phantom limb pain so there is always in complex regional pain syndromes also uh, earlier the perception used to be it's either the sympathetic parasympathetic imbalance okay but now they have come to the fact that it's a central nervous system uh, mediated pain so make sure that you check the battery first and then go ahead with checking the wire or the bulbs okay depending on the switch for example okay so make sure that you are not missing the brain okay so that's important something uh, so my emphasis is here that you treat the person okay what determines the person and his personality is the brain okay you can treat the body you can treat the structure you can be an expert in joints mobilization you can be a, a resource person in myofascial techniques or you are a founder of a neural uh, mobilizations and all that but that is only tissue level okay so that is not the actually the treatment okay we are treating means we have to treat the person okay so we are telling about bio psycho social mechanism okay model so it's very very important that we do not miss treating the brain okay so the next component is the treatments okay what are the treatments that are possible and it could be available uh, in a chronic low back pain with the central sensitization once you have known that 
what could be done. First and foremost, I would refer all the viewers of this webinar to get in touch with the NOI group, noigroup.com or gradedmotorimagery.com. Okay. Uh, extensive work has been done by David Butler and especially with special mention to my friend Professor Lorimer Mosley from uh, Australia. So that I've done tremendous work and it has inspired people all around the world like Joe Nidge from Belgium, Adrian Lou, who is also published a recent article in uh, Journal of Manual Manipulative Therapy that uh, evaluation itself has reduced the pain symptoms by more than 1.4 on the visual analog scale in chronic low back pain. So that means uh, in-depth evaluation which allows the patients to express their pain experience or their understanding everything that itself has created reduction of symptoms compared to all the tissue based techniques okay so remember it's not a randomized clinical trial which uh, low et al has published but remember the other studies independent studies have not reported this unanimous result okay so remember that this is something which we have to think about it uh, evidence is growing for uh, brain based interventions okay so that has been uh, very consistently growing okay there is sufficient evidence i'll tell you about the treatment technique but uh, remember that what way we communicate to the patient that is first thing okay so when you take an history when you are uh, inquiring about what is the aggravating relieving factors everything avoid structural terms okay patient might show you an mri with a disc bulge uh, make sure that you are convincing the patient to understand that uh, the bulge in the mri is always there but the pain in your body is related to the activity okay so remember that it is activity related symptoms not the structure related symptoms okay because that has to go out of their brain that the bulgy disc okay unfortunately the physicians or the surgeons will show them the spine and show the bulgy disc with a red uh, discoloration there okay uh, so that's their concept of understanding anatomical because their treatment is anatomical okay they're replacing the structures they're removing the structures or they are uh, repairing the structures okay so they will describe according to their language but you do not use it as a physical therapist okay there are chiropractors who tell about the subluxations the 3d anatomy spine and all that um, that is again is their uh, what is called as um, model of thought okay their school of thought i am not um, against their explanations we never know what the evidence really is but what is important is that structural uh, descriptions okay when we talk about that your facet joint is affected your muscle has got strained your ligaments have got uh, twisted or disc has got bulged okay these kind of terms we use to the patients it accelerates the central sensitization and chronicity okay so remember that and the next thing in patients with central sensitization whatever surgery is done in the back including fusion or discectomy any surgery is also patient will still have the back pain because it's not dependent upon the peripheral stimuli that's why failed back surgery syndrome rates are much more for every type of surgery for back pain okay so come to the fact that uh, subluxations and adjustments chiropractic or osteopathy for example um, they all have reported only short term improvements in symptoms okay so remember that unless it is something to do with the brain it is not going to actually promote a, a long term or a medium term with a functional recovery okay where return to activity is successful okay among musculoskeletal pain largest in the symptom presentation and largest indication for visiting a physical therapist is low back pain okay and largest in the hospital expenses the stay work related disability okay everything is low back pain okay and functional disability also you might have neck pain but you can get up and you can do all the self care activities bathing and toileting everything but if you have low back pain you will be forced to take the bed rest okay uh, if it is so severe and remember even in uh, extreme cases of sciatica where there is a disc rupture sequestration and the patient is having 24 hour symptoms do not advise bed rest more than 3 days okay more than three days bed rest is going to promote chronicity okay it's going to promote accelerate the central sensitization so beware of this don't give bed rest beyond this if there is trauma there is a fracture 
or uh, if there is going to be a dislocation like lysthesis is 3 4 you can have the rest and uh, see that whether it's an unstable segment then continue the rest for even three months if it is fracture but if it is the lysthesis is like that come back to the braces and then mobilizing the patient as fast as possible uh, because being normal is the only way to become normal okay so don't think that you are restricting an activity the patient will become normal okay i'll tell you an example on a funny side a patient comes with osteoarthritis of the bilateral knees okay they tell that when i am squatting i am having knee pain okay you might give the treatment and after which the patient will ask can i go and squat okay give the therapist on day one to advise the patient that don't squat i'll tell you when to squat okay so so they advise against that activity so the patient do not squat okay so patient comes with symptom that i have knee pain on squatting you tell them don't squat is it a treatment okay patient comes to you with symptom that back pain on bending and lifting weights after applying all the physical therapy methods you advise them don't bend don't lift weights is it a treatment okay that the patient could have done before only when they were not bending they were not having back pain why should they pay the money spend their time have a trust on you and then take the treatment and after that you advise them don't do that okay then what is the use if a patient tells i am touching here it is paining you tell them don't touch there is it a treatment okay so remember on the serious note if a patient tells whenever i am breathing i am getting chest pain will you tell them don't breathe think okay so never advised a functional restriction as a solution okay you have to monitor the functional activities okay which one is actually just uh, aggravating more which one is precipitating which one is contributing okay and uh, you have to differentiate that and then advise get back to the evaluation webinar you will get more information on that but remember you have to do what is called as activity evaluation activity monitoring activity pacing activities which are not painful the patient should continue okay movements flexion if it was painful if lateral flexion not painful patient should do that okay because any kind of movement is life motion is lotion okay the joints have to be moving then only the subject becomes stays normal okay so rest or bracing is not a solution okay although uh, it helps commercially for the other group of professionals okay you should see justice in terms of humanity that people have to become normal okay if you are having back pain you want to become normal as fast as possible that is only possible by being normal okay the next situation here the intervention communication i was talking about the motivational interviewing where you are empowering the patient like patient being the authority to choose every each and every sentence and its interpretation always you should keep in mind okay and uh, not miss that okay uh, if i am telling that am i clear okay i should not ask like that that means i am the boss i should rather ask that are you clear with what i am saying okay did you understand what i am saying okay do you feel that i am telling something which is clear okay so this is sentences to empower the patient motivation interview okay so like this it goes the communication goes and uh, next comes to the educational interventions especially the pain neuroscience education okay uh, there's a structured methodological approach which is important for uh, what is called as uh, <clears throat> uh, explaining the pain physiology in the simplest terms okay we are using metaphors uh, simplified uh, stories or uh, terms to make the patient understand the role of the receptors the peripheral nerve the spinal cord the supraspinal okay the tracts ascending the cortex the thalamus okay the descending and uh, all the mechanisms including the gait control or the descending inhibition okay all are explained in simplified terms uh, within 5 minutes okay it may be 10 to 15 minutes it's a one to one session uh, we explain them it's it's more enjoyable it's more interactive uh, lorimer mostly has found that uh, 10 minutes of individualized uh, pain neuroscience education has produced 30 degrees improvement in the slr okay straight leg raise in patients who had low back pain in his randomized control trial okay published in journal of physiotherapy the australian okay so remember 
there are randomized control trials across a variety of settings which have proven that pain neuroscience education is beneficial for various musculoskeletal pain okay so do not underestimate uh, upgrading your knowledge for the pain neuroscience education there is an exclusive short book explain pain written by Lorimer Mosley and David Butler so do not uh, miss that and also get to the resources there are uh, what is called as uh, the um, laterality discrimination okay greater motor imagery the website has the first part right left discrimination okay patients who have central sensitization or chronic pain have very poor or impaired right left discrimination okay they cannot identify the right hand versus the left hand from the uh, pictorial uh, pictures okay what is shown to the flashcards shown to them so we can train the patient also there are alternative methods like brain gym where you can exercise the brain by uh, active learning methods like learning a language playing some games okay mixture of colors numbers problem solving games and all that which reduces the symptoms okay central sensitization so remember that uh, the more active you keep your brain more you are able to manage the pain and most importantly aerobic activity excess prescriptions because that is again proven for all uh, chronic pain or central pain like even cancer pain uh, it's the aerobic activity which has been proven in the who's guidelines itself so remember when you do an aerobic activity multiple muscles multiple joints all the functional regions everything is working so not just the pain region it is the other regions which are there also get activated so the pain region gets diminished okay so that's the dynamic neuroplasticity of the brain okay so we can definitely learn to master the control over the pain and the patients would be much glad to be in control of their life and uh, motivate them by telling that pain should not control you okay it is you who should control the brain pain and uh, there's a short circuit in your brain because of which uh, the pain impulses are getting uh, abnormally perceived otherwise uh, why will you get the pain when i am stroking with the cotton okay cotton is nothing a wisp of cotton you take it in the low back and you are uh, uh, stroking it brush evoked allodynia okay so patients feel the burning pain why okay so you have to explain them that this is the reason okay that's the brain that is hypersensitive you have to tackle that and you are the master of it there are techniques like uh, mirror therapy for extremities okay where we keep the mirror and then we keep the part uh, hidden behind the mirror and then we see the reflection of the normal hand okay onto the mirror and the brain is trained to feel that my affected hand is also working okay so that has reduced the symptoms substantially and uh, there are uh, demonstrations done by the explain pain group the noi group they have shown about rubber uh, hand rubber finger okay the dynamic uh, response of the brain that uh, we are able to integrate a rubber finger as my finger okay so when they are pulling the rubber finger i am getting the pain because uh, they gave the same pulling uh, pressure on my finger and the rubber okay my finger is hidden i am watching the rubber alone so brain is uh, trying to integrate that the rubber finger is my finger okay so within matter of 5 to 10 minutes i experience that directly so that much the brain is vulnerable okay for central sensitization so pain neuroscience education is a main one even virtual reality it tackles the brain and then it comes okay even any kind of a prayer you are um, reciting any kind of uh, usually what you used to do in your brain in your hobbies everything painting sketching everything is going to activate the major uh, centers of the brain which have been utilized uh, over the period of years okay so when you do that again definitely central sensitization is going to be diminished and the patient is going to have a better opportunity to get back into functional recovery okay so you are through here with a holistic perspective where we have the pain neuroscience education we can integrate with multiple methods of interventions and you can use it for the patients with central sensitization uh, even if you do not know how to do what to do for central sensitization please remember one thing attempt the pain neuroscience education on everyone it's not going to harm okay patients who are not willing to listen to you they are cognitive affective okay they are psychological that's why they don't cooperate with you central sensitization patients will cooperate with you okay they are cognitively sound okay they don't have a maladaptive understanding okay so they only have a heightened um, you know that reaction to that pain okay they are afraid of the pain fear avoidance or something like that. so remember it's a hyper vigilance to the pain they don't avoid a movement 
they will do it okay when the pain is less they will do it uh, when they are doing it pain will be less when they stop it then the pain comes okay so that is activity and the pain interrelationship also so make sure that you don't miss this interrelationship and uh, see to it that get yourself upgraded in all this information uh, get the mechanism based classification clinical reasoning okay low back pain in its evaluation differential diagnosis okay manual therapy for low back pain peripheral techniques yes and also the central techniques okay aompt has a lot of resources we have uh, videos which you can provide okay when you register for a very affordable fee and uh, you get certification and also do the online courses at your convenience um i would not suggest attending any di direct courses before 31st march 2021 remember that uh, safety is much more utmost priority life is important for yourself and also for your beloved and your professional responsibilities so don't hold direct workshops don't hold uh, gatherings of a huge number of people okay at least till april 1st let the situation stabilize all around the globe then we'll get together we'll meet until then we should meet online we should utilize the technology and make sure that we upgrade each other and we motivate and inspire each other with knowledge okay with that closing terms i have a very poor internet connectivity that's why i'm going ahead with the screen recording parallelly so that this screen recorded video i can upload on the youtube and then share the link here in the webinar portion of the twitter okay so so that we don't miss the information so i'm glad that uh, i could contribute this information although we could not have live participation because of the technical uh, interruption here um but i'm also sure that those who watch this video definitely will get the inputs and then further discussions we can go ahead and uh, we can also plan future webinars on related topics okay so good luck to you all take care and uh, fight covid okay and make sure that uh, learn learn safe okay so make sure that you learn the best okay that is also important join aompt